What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching a big machine, Sanitizer 400. Let's go ahead and talk about it. To be quite honest with you, this race was okay. It wasn't a great race. It was spectacular, Indianapolis. But I don't think that today's race was very terrible. Now, before we start all the review, I want to talk about the pit road incident that began at the beginning of this race. When they got through the competition caution, they all were coming down to pit road. Someone checked up on pit road, and basically everyone collided with each other. There was a really bad crash. Um, Jim, Justin Allgaier got involved. Um, I think Michael Medallo got involved in the wreck. Ryan Priest, Ricky Senos Jr., Chris Buescher, and Martin Truex Jr. all were involved in the big crash. Another thing to note, Jimmy Johnson was not in the race today. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, for those you don't know, he got infected with COVID-19, so Justin Allgaier was driving the car. And Justin Allgaier was up to about 28th or 29th before the competition caution came out. But because of that, they got taken out of the race. They tried to continue later. Um, another, while that was going on, a pit crew member was struck. Uh, the pit crew member was looked like he got injured. He was smiling, though, which that's good to see. Hope that pit crew member is okay, and I hope he gets well and be back doing some pit roading really soon. The guys on pit road are incredible. They're brave, and I wish him the best of luck at getting back to the racetrack really, really soon. I think it also affected Blaney because Blaney did not have a really great day either in this race. Um, also, for that, Martrix Jr. had issues. He had ECU problems. He was up front at the beginning, and he just dropped like a rock because his ECU had a problem. So that was really bad to see. And then this race would come into where he had a lot of tire problems. Uh, tons of drivers had tire issues. Eric Jones got into the wall really, really hard in this race. Um, William Byron had a tire go down. Ryan Newman had a tire go down. There was a lot of tire problems in this race. It kind of felt like the 2008 Brickyard 400 in a sense because there were a lot of people that had tire problems in this race. And Goodyear, you got to bring a better tire when we come to Indy. You know that the tires are bad. But what this did was kind of shook up the race because we saw a lot of contenders in this race. But Really, at the end of the day, this race was going to come down to either Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, or Chase Elliott. Unfortunately for Chase Elliott, near the end of this race, he got trapped in the back. Now, he was up front the majority of the day, but unfortunately, he decided to come down pit road at the end of the race, which I don't know why he would do that. It kind of cost him at the end of the race. So, the final stage is going to be Denny Hamlin or Kevin Harvick who are going to go out for the win because those guys... They had the best cars all afternoon. They were taking off. Uh, Chris Bell was up front, though, and Cole Custer had a really good day as well. But one driver who I'm really happy to see up front today was Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth was up front, top five, top ten, pretty much all day long. But those guys really had nothing for Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. So on the final run, uh, Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick were playing a cat and mouse game. Harvick had the lead. Harvick was making some really bold and impressive moves. To be quite honest with you, on his restarts, he was going three wide, making moves. Denny Hamill was doing the same thing on multiple restarts uh, throughout this race. But then we decide to come, but at the end of this race, the driver side to play Cat Malkus game. Now, both drivers were supposed to come down Perot with about 30 laps to go. But Harvard did not get the communication clear. Denny Hamill basically jumps on a Perot. On top of that, uh, Kevin Harvick got a bad piss off. He is, I believe his left rear, he had issues on the left rear on pit road. So he got out of pit stops two seconds behind Hamill. But he just started running Denny Hamill down. And it looked like Kevin Harvick was actually going to pass Denny Hamill possibly for the race win. And then a caution came out with 26 laps to go for Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman basically shakes up this race because he cuts the tire. Now, the only three guys stay out. Um... Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, and Chris Bell. Chris Bell, like I said, had a really good day until the end of the race. Because tires were a big issue in this race. So, we come back, and it looks like it's going to be Denny Hamlin. Because Denny Hamlin gets a really, really awesome restart. Makes it three wide, and he drives off and pulls away. Now, Denny Hamlin, uh, it looks like he's going to officially win this race. Harvick and Kenseth, they don't really have anything. Kenseth has 11 or 12 uh, lap pressure tires. But really, he had nothing for Denny Hamlin, and there was really, I don't think there was going to be a chance for Kevin Harvick to run Denny Hamlin down because he had trimmed the car out, but he couldn't run him run him down. Denny Hamlin basically is driving off with this race, right? Nope. Denny Hamlin was seven laps to go in this race, 
cuts a left front tire and falls out of the race with the tire problems. To be quite honest with you, that really, really sucked for Hamill because Hamill had a really good car. Him, like I said, him and Harvick had the best cars of the day. Uh, Hamlin did get a lot of points, so, so that will help him in his playoffs. But, man, I thought Hamlin was going to have a shot to win today, and just the tire went down. So this race would come down between Kevin Harvick and Matt Kenseth. On the ensuing restart, though, Kevin Hart basically drove off to the sunset, uh, got by Kenseth, and he just took off on the restart, pulled about six or seven cars ahead. Kenseth was starting to close in on the last lap in Harvick, but there was not enough time for Matt Kenseth to cash Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick today would score his third Brickyard 400th win, his fourth win of the season, and his 53rd career win in the NASCAR Cup Series. He is now one win away from tying Lee Petty on NASCAR's all-times win list. So congrats, Kevin Hark, on that. Meanwhile, also on the last lap, there was a really there was a crash on the last lap. Uh, Matt Manil got kind of crowned down by Austin Dillon. They went up to the racetrack. They both took themselves out. It looked like those two were going to probably get a top 10 finish today. They did get a lot of points. Both guys did. But I don't know what Austin Dillon was doing. I'm not going to blame one or the other. It was just a race incident, but those guys are being stupid at the end of the race, and that's going to affect your possible playoff run here, which we'll be looking at that very soon, because we are kind of getting close to the playoffs. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. So Kevin Harvick today won the race. Matt Kenseth finished second. Kenseth with a fantastic run. Kenseth was up front in the top 10 all race long, and he got up to second. Amen. Finally, Kenseth has a great run. I was rooting for Kenseth to win the race today. But he gets a second place finish. Awesome run for Matt Kenseth. Uh, Eric Amarola, after having a tire uh, get a loose wheel, he gets a third place finish. Comes back, finishes third. Great run for him. Brad Kozlowski, bounce back day, finishes fourth. And Cole Custer gets his first career top five finish in the NASCAR Cup Series. You'll love to see it. Good job for Cole Custer. Cole Custer had a pretty good day. He had a top 15 run going. And then at the end of the race, he was in the top five, top 10. So Cole Custer deserves top five. Good for him. Kyle Busch finished at six. Um, Kyle's just not running as good as he should be. I mean, sixth place isn't bad. Another top ten, I guess. Man, Kyle Busch still has not had any playoff points. Still winless in 2020. Joe Gibbs really had a bad day today in general. Kyle Busch is the only one who finished the race for that team. So a struggling day for Joe Gibbs. In a general, a bad day for Hendrick Motorsports as well. Hendrick Motorsports looked good at the beginning, but they all had tire problems and all got involved in wrecks. Michael McDowell. Gets a 7th place finish. Good day for front. Front row had a pretty good day as well. 7th uh, place for Michael McDowell. I don't remember John Hunter check finish. I'll check that here in a second. Tyler Reddick gets an 8th place finish. Another really good day for the rookie. Bubba Walsh, another top 10 finish for him. Good job for Bubba. And Joey Logano finishes 10th. I've written Joey Logano off in the championship run. I don't think he's got a shot to win a title, honestly, anymore right now. Unless he can turn a season around. But he's had 4 straight. Well, he had 1 top 10 finish like the last 5 races. So, Logano's been struggling. Chase finishes 11th. Christopher Bell, 12th. Christopher Bell and Chase Lee both deserve top fives today, but they finish 11th to 12th. Again, Bell, it's helping him in the points, but Nisi, Bell, I mean, Bell deserves top five today. Just hope to finish his comfort with Bell because he deserves a lot better runs than he's been having this year. Uh, Kurt Busch, 13th. Thought I'd see a little more out of Kurt today. Again, his teammate did better. That's good. Uh, Ty Dillon, 14th. Clint Boyer finishes 15th. Uh, not a bad run for Quinn. Quinn was in the top 10 a lot of this race. SHR had a really good day overall, but they really couldn't do much. John Hunter Nemechek finishes 16th. Ross Chastain, 17th. 18th, Austin Dillon. 19th, Matt DiBenedetto. And 20th place goes to Daniel Suarez. How about Daniel Suarez getting a top 20? Good run for Suarez. 21st goes to J.J. Yealy. 22nd, B.J. McLeod. 23rd place, Quinn Half. 24th, Garrett Smithley. 25th place goes to Josh Balicki. 26th, Joey Gase. 27th, William Byron. 20th, Denny Hamlin. Uh, 29th, Timmy Hill. Alex Bowman, 30th. 31st place goes to Chris Buescher. Ryan Blaney finishes 32nd. Uh, Blaney also had a tire problem. at the. I think he got loose on a restart. He finishes 32nd today. 33rd place, Eric Jones. 34th, Ryan Newman. 35th goes to Brennan Poole. 36th goes to Ricky Sinos. 37th, Justin Allgaier. 38th place goes to Mark Trix Jr. 39th, Corey Joy. And Ryan Priest finishes last in 40th place. So let's go ahead and overall talk about this race. When we come to Indianapolis for the Brickyard 400 or the Big Machine Hand Sanitizer uh, race, whatever this race is called at this point, um, I don't really have that high of expectations going into this race. 
because usually it's really hard to pass. It's been like that even in the Gen 4 era and when NASCAR started racing here. It is very, very difficult to pass. The racing generally is never really that great. So you have to have really low expectations coming in this race. And I didn't think the racing was great. The restarts did make it better. The restarts were really, really exciting for sure. So overall for me, I'm going to give this race a 6 out of 10. Um, I wanted a little bit more from this race. I usually kind of, well, actually I'm going to give this race a 5 out of 10. I thought I wanted a little bit more from this race. I like the strategy in this race. I like the ending. The good, honestly, not a bad finish, but Harvick overall deserved to win. Uh, if the best guy at car wins, I think they deserve to win. So Harvick deserved to win today. He had the best car. And at this point, Kevin Harvick is looking like he is the guy to be. Denny Hamlin's right there with him, but Kevin Harvick right now is emerging as the car to be with getting his fourth win of the year in his 53rd career. Again, Kevin Harvick deserves to be in the Hall of Fame at this point. There's no ifs and buts about that. The fact he's at 53 career wins, that is amazing and extraordinary. Um, I am going to be making video possibly, though, on talking about the start times because, again, the start times, um, I, I got to say this, the start times are absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't know why we're starting these races at 4 p.m., Eastern, we should have started this race at a 1 or 12 or 1. We would have gotten this race done today, NBC. I don't know why NASCAR doesn't listen. Please start these races earlier. Thank you, so we can get the races done earlier in the day and not have these videos up in early 9 in the evening. Absolutely ridiculous. But, anyway, that is going to be it for my review from the Big Machine Hand Side and Tizer 400. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Turn notification on, turn notification on so you can be notified. When a video does go live on my channel, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Links, links in the description below for that. God, I cannot talk today. And uh, comment your thoughts and opinions on today's race. What did you think of today's race? Let me know in the comments below. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.